Hey guys, this week we got a collection of Sour 38 H's in, which I want to go over with you, but it made me stop and think about the fact that this 38 H compared to this PPK, this seems greatly underappreciated and undervalued. Let's check these two out. So these two guns are very comparable and yet they're very different um, in terms of value. The PPKs, as most of you know, are very, very popular and the prices go through the roof. I was buying this back in 2010, uh, eight, nine hundred dollars. I remember I could pick up a fairly nice gun, eight or nine hundred dollars. I could also pick up a 38H for eight or nine hundred dollars. These now, this gun would probably be 2,400. Um, and this gun is not much more than it was back then. Probably I would try to bump it up to about uh, maybe 1100 or 1200. Let's take a look at my site right now and because it's a great example. So under Axis, uh, under Axis pistols, I have one Sour 38H. That's all I have. And most, most of the time I only have one or two and you can see this one is actually, I think it's a military example. It's Waffen proofed and it's only 950. Now, if I go to my Walther PPK page, this doesn't count as that, that is actually a post-war, but these are all uh, wartime. You can tell from the grip. Uh, these are commercial guns and I, ha I actually have two pages, but you can go through. There's a commercial, I just said 2400, that's 2650. Uh, we have military ones, they're gonna be more like 3200. I'm just paging through, look at all the PPKs I have. So I have a plethora, another big word, <laughs> a plethora of PPKs and very few uh, Sour 38Hs. Now, in terms of production, the Sour 38H, they made about 220, 230 uh, thousand. 220 to 230,000. The PPK, they made about 330, maybe 350,000. So there's, a, there's about 100,000 um, more PPKs made than Sour 38Hs. So generally these two guns are very similar. Of course, this came out in 1930 and the 38H, the 38 stands for the, uh, the year they got the patent, which was 1938. But the production was 1939. So the first year of production, they came out actually with crown end proofs. But then after that, starting in 1940, they had eagle end proofs. We know like this has crown end proofs, but it was made in 1938. So it's pretty comparable. You can see the finish is a little bit better on the PPK, but it's very similar uh, in terms of style. And of course, Sauer, uh, who had been making some shotguns, they also made the Luftwaffe drilling and other um, other guns for the military, they were trying to break into the uh, military market for making sidearms, particularly for officers. So if we look at them, you can see they're about the same size, although this hammer is not exposed and this hammer is exposed. There's some advantages and disadvantages to that. Um, and then front view. Uh, it operates, I think this has a more advanced design. Of course, it came out uh, eight years later, the design came out eight years later. Uh, so let me show you some of the design f differences first, and then I'm gonna walk through that collection that just came in. Of course, this gun works in double action. You can see. This gun works in double action like this. You can also cock it by doing that. Let's do that again. It has a cocker and then decocker right here. So uh, that doesn't have it here. They have a push button, but push button mag release. This has a push button mag release. The hammer, the exposed hammer, actually not exposed. It helps you f f to not get this caught, like getting in and out of a seat of a jet or a, they didn't have jets, <laughs> getting in and out of a seat of a plane or a Jeep. Um, it wouldn't get caught and accidentally Pull that, the hammerless. Some people prefer the hammerless. I really like this feature of cocking and decocking. Uh, also, what I've noticed is when I pull this back and it's on the last round, it stays back. That's how it was designed. To make the slide go forward, I have to take that out. Go like this. And then it's ready to fire, of course. 
On this, magazine is in. It doesn't stay back, but it does take my glove. Now, the other thing that I like is on the takedown. On the PPK, in order to take it apart, I pull this down, and this always is a little cumbersome at a gun show, so I'd go get a credit card. This is just a piece of cardboard. And I put it like that, and then the slide will come off. Pretty simple. But what's even simpler, the gloves are important, but they do get in the way. I use these really to wipe off any fingerprints, so it's, it really helps with the videos, but not so much when I get them caught. What I like about this is you have this little bar and you just pull it down, okay? And this comes off the exact same way. And also, I was able to leave the magazine in, whereas the PPK, I have to take the magazine out to take it apart. Not a big deal, but this, this I think, makes it a lot simpler. So we put this back on, and again, the magazine is in it, and PPK, you can't do that. And that goes forward even though the magazine is in it. Let me do that one more time in case it was a little awkward. Off. Back on, and then pop that back up, and it's ready to go. Everything else is pretty much the same. There are 7.65. Uh, they both are prohibited from being imported because the barrels are too short. It's one of the reasons the PPKs are, um, go up in value more than the PPs. Every year, hundreds of PPs are imported from European countries and Canada, whereas the PPK cannot be imported. They're restricted from being imported. And same with the 38H, which is good for the investment value because they're not going to flood the market with PPKs or 38Hs. And that's what this is all about. I got this collection in. I want to talk about the fact that I think these are underpriced. They're good values. And for a collector, they have all the history. This has all the history that this PPK does, but it's about half the price. Okay, I'm going to pop through the variations and I'm going to illustrate that the, the point is that the PPK has the same exact variations. Uh, but again, the Sour has fewer of them. They're a little more rare. Um, and they all have the same, uh, similar Nazi markings, and you'll recognize them as I go through them. This is the first one. I was just saying to Randy before we started um, that when it comes to rare Sours, they sell for as large a premium as the PPKs and sometimes even more, and you'll see that. So this, for example, very early. Most of them were crown end, by the way. This is uh, eagle. You can see the eagle end. But this is 1940. Uh, they started at about uh, 270,000. Uh, this is a double eagle, which is the first variation of Waffenproof. And here the Waffenproof would be Eagle 37. And here you can see the Waffenproof PPK is Waffen Eagle 359. So 359 versus 37. But the PPK doesn't have anything comparable to the double eagle. They only made about 2,000 of these, and we've sold these in the 4,500 range to 6,500 range. So they're just early high polish. Remember the PPK had a high polish finish. You can see the high polish finish here. But on this, it's an early gun, high polish finish. It's got some wear here. Um, and of course, it comes with this holster, which is actually dated 1941. And probably the gun is from 1940, and it is Waffen stamped. So these go together, and this sold already. A guy called in and said, do you have a nice Waffen-proof sour? And I said, mm, only this double eagle. And he said, I'll take it. So that's sold. Now, this is a commercial gun. So this would compare to the commercial gun like I just, I just showed you the uh, commercial PPK. Uh, it does have a reduced slide legend. You can see here the slide legend has the JP Sour and Son in Sewell. Uh, here they just put the caliber. So this is a later gun. They were saving time. It's a duller finish. You can see the machine markings, etc. Uh, one thing you want to look for, by the way, going back to this one, on an original finish, and we'll see this on a police gun. This is high polish, but this is always dull. So if this is shiny and this is shiny, it's been refinished. You can see here that the, the grip straps are shiny, but this is a dull finish, and that is correct. Um, this is a duller finish and it's uniform all the way across. Now the serial number here, this is about 1944, so it's, it's much later, but that's a commercial model and comparable to a commercial PPK. This is a police holster and this exact same holster was used for the PPK police as well. So PPK police Eagle C would go in 
this exact same holster, they're interchangeable. And this, um, this Eagle, I think it's an Eagle C Sour, there it is, high polish finish, Police Eagle C, from about 1941, maybe 42, the holster is 42, has a spare magazine. The early ones have the SS, which is not issued to the SS, but that stands for Sour and Sons, and so that's just the logo SS. And you can see dull finish, shiny finish. So we know this is original. So this, I'm thinking this early Eagle C is gonna be about 1500 uh, as a rig, and an Eagle C PPK as a rig is gonna be 3000 or more. So it's about half the price of a PPK. Just, just to show you, I'm making my point that the PPK is a lot more and perhaps these are undervalued. This one, just like the PPK, if you see a PPK that was issued to the military and it's nickeled, it means it was GI nickeled and that's what's true for this. The, the owner of this thought maybe it was factory nickeled, but because, and it, you know, they could have a factory nickel, would, which would be a rare variation, but it would only be for a commercial gun. This is military uh, Eagle 37. And so this is a nickel plated. And again, it's gonna go for a shooter grade price. I think I have about $800 on that. It's fairly inexpensive. Let's go to the next one. Uh, again, very similar holster, but uh, looks a lot like the Aka holster. And this is a commercial gun that's still high polish finish, commercial gun. Again, if it was a PPK, we're talking about 2400. Uh, but with the Sour 38H, this is all very beautiful. Look at, uh, this says browned down. This is a dull finish. This is a high polish finish. So a commercial variation, again, about the half of the price of a PPK. Uh, this is another Police. We can see 42. There's the Police Eagle. This same holster could go with a PPK that was Eagle C. Later on, we'll see an Eagle F. Okay, so we see the shortened logo, it's got machine marks, and I believe that's an Eagle F. Hard to see the F. I have a, a better marked one, but this is kind of a rare variation. Um, I think they made about 7,000 of the Eagle F. Uh, the Eagle C is a little more plentiful, so this is a little more expensive, but the Eagle F PPK, so late war Eagle F PPK, here's one here. They have a Dural frame, so that changes it a lot, but Eagle F PPK is going to be thirty-five to four thousand. These sell for about eighteen hundred. Maybe as a full rig, it'd go as much as uh, two thousand. So again, almost half the price. Here's another police holster, forty-two, with the police eagle, uh, Sour thirty-eight H. It's a police eagle C. The police eagle C. Here's a comparison with a police eagle C of a PPK and this is gonna be about half the price. Now this also still has the early logo. There's a, I'll show you a later magazine that has the early SS logo, but later on in the war, certainly by 43, the end of 43, early 44, they did away with that and they just had a, here's one, plain bottom with what I call the half, half moon or the crescent moon. So there's a plain bottom, it was a little cheaper. There's two of them. So this, this, uh, this was the Eagle F, it has the, Plain bottom. This could go with either one. It could have the earlier magazine or a later, but that's a comparison. They have the same variations. We see the commercial, Eagle C, Eagle F. We also see the Waffen proofed. This one is a little bit nicer than the earlier ones I showed you, but this is Waffen proof. And by the way, that's in the 500,000, which is near the end of the range where they should still all be uh, matching. So late 44, maybe even early 45, later magazine. Um, it has the simplified uh, logo, so it's just the caliber. On this side is completely blank, and you see the Eagle N proof mark. This is another Eagle F, but this time it's a little bit nicer looking than the, oh, well, you can see the Eagle F a lot clearer. And again, compared to an Eagle F PPK, it's running about half the price. Also in the 500,000, technically this this is an early magazine which does not go with this gun, but I leave them alone. Some people will say, can I trade this in? Sure, I'll, and as long as it's not numbered. You do have to watch the police variation. Every once in a while you'll find a numbered magazine, and a lot of times it's just the three digits here or the full serial number here. 
Um, but they're always done at the police arsenal, not at the factory. So I don't think they have police numbered factory magazines, but every once in a while I will see magazines that are numbered to the gun when it's the police variation. So we saw police Eagle C, Eagle F. I already said the Eagle C is more common. All right, now I have two guns that are special out of this collection. Both of these, you know, on the PP, actually the PPs and a few PPKs, they have the GI put together guns. They're mismatched GI put together. The main way that you can tell is they're often mismatched, but also they have no proof marks. So where we normally would see the Eagle and right here, there is no proof mark here. And also on the barrel, there's no proof mark. So this actually is a variation, very similar. It's an end of the war, GI put together, 1945, put together by the GIs that came into the factory in Seoul and put some guns together. Now, what makes this extra special is they put it together with a factory prototype. This, uh, and this I'm going by experts who know more than I do. They, they said that this is a factory prototype because notice the grip is cut differently and this is a lot bigger. Probably just because I struggled when I went to cock it and decock it. The decocking is easy, but to cock it, if you don't have good thumb strength, there it goes, I got it. With the, as you would know, uh, with uh, junior high, you learned about the advantages of a lever. Uh, the, long, the longer you have the lever, this is a longer lever and it's a prototype. So this was put together from parts in, at, in the factory at the end of the war, GI put it together, it has a prototype probably from the early production, easier to cock, easier to de decock, but never was put into production. So this is a rare prototype. If you watch Ian McCullen's channel, uh, Forgotten Weapons, he does prototypes and people pay, pay 10 times what the gun is worth because of the prototype. This is quoted at a lot more money for people who like the prototype. The serial number is at the end of the war, but no proof marks. And I believe the slide is mismatched. You know, I should probably have told you the slides are numbered inside right here. Here I see 982 and the serial number here I see 671. So as would I would expect, if the GIs put it together, they grab the parts and it's a GI mismatch, which is correct. And again, in PPK land and PP land, the, the uh, slide and frames don't match on the GI put together. Anyway, this is a very rare gun and somebody's gonna pay a premium for it. Cocker and decocker is just an uh, early prototype. Same thing here, this is a GI mismatch. You can see end of the war serial number. I'm gonna, this is unfinished, no proof marks. Serial number here, but not sure. So much easier taking this apart, by the way. I got uh, 907 and 712. So GI mismatch put together at the end of the war uh, by the GIs that took over the factory. Much easier. Okay, I hope you're sitting down because these are the last two and these come from my personal collection. Uh, very, very expensive, more expensive than a comparable PPK just because they're that much more rare. Now, if you follow my videos, I've talked about SA guns before, and we do know that there were hundreds of SA marked PPs. So the SA was organized by regions, the uh, state or district they came from. So they had Turrigan, they had Mitta, uh, they had Sashin, uh, the different, different uh, districts. And they made hundreds of them, but uh, the Sauer, and you can see Sauer 7.65, SA marking. So the PP has a similar holster, but it'll say Walder PP inside. And then the, um, the marking, the SA marking is on the front grip strap. And here's some examples of some guns we sold. But Sauer, from what I've read, and this comes from Jim Cates' book, Sauer never got a contract to provide SA guns, but what they did is they had a sales team that went around to different districts and they, um, they gave them a couple free samples. And so whether it was one, two, three, five, um, there's very few known. This is from Turrigan where the factory was. So the salesman from the Sewell factory in the district of Turrigan went and uh, met with the SA guy and said, here's an example, uh, compliments of the factory, would you like to order some? 
they stayed loyal to uh, Walther. I'm sure there were bribes or prizes or gifts involved, uh, but Walther was in really well with the Nazi party. Uh, and so they got a lot of the contracts. And when Sauer tried to get a contract, it just generally never happened. So these are dealer samples. This one is SA Group Turgen. Uh, there are a couple others. I know there's Alpenland that was later war, and you can see the high polish finish. So this is equivalent to a, a uh, presentation piece. Uh, also, you'll notice it is crown end proof. So this is actually 1939, first year of production. Uh, just absolutely beautiful, uh, given as a sample, and I'm sure never used. So there is the holster, SA holster, with an SA gun. And these were also made by uh, Aka, which is the, the, Walther, the Walther guns, the presentation guns like Party Leader, they were also made by Aka. So that was the same distributor, but this was Sauer instead of Walther. And then one other, evidently Himmler, didn't feel the way everybody else did because he ordered about 50 of these presentation sours. Um, you could choose a pair, I think it was a pair of binoculars, a really nice watch, or a sour 38H, and it says, to the snipers. I did a whole video on this gun. Uh, if you want to look at that, uh, just search under legacy collectibles, uh, comma, sniper presentation. Uh, so this was for 100 kills. Uh, signed by Himmler. It's estimated that they made less than 50, and today there's, there's, only a, a, there's probably less than a dozen known, and these can easily go anywhere from 30,000 to 50,000. So that means not all 38 H's are unappreciated and undervalued. So I hope you like that overview of Sauer 38 H's. If you're going to our website looking for them, they're going to move quickly now that I said they're undervalued. But if you have some you want to sell and move quickly, send them to us because we plan on uh, letting people know that this is a great way to get started in your collection. Find undervalued uh, wartime uh, collector pieces and they almost always go up in value. Make sure you like and subscribe to our channel because we're going to do a lot more like this.